Good evening and welcome back to the Shadows of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin running our campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin playing Wilhelm Wolfsbane, the human swashbuckler rogue. And we're joined today by our very good friends. Jill Benitis playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter eldritch knight. And Joe O'Gorman playing Wrath, the Asimar Warlock. Thank you for joining us once again. If you are just tuning in for the very first time, welcome. We are the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel, where we cover everything D&D, including advice for Dungeon Masters and guides for players. We're super excited right now because we just recently got our hands on Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, and we are taking a deep dive into all that new stuff, including a video coming out this Thursday where we're going to be looking at all the new spells in Tasha's Cauldron. Uh, some of these new game features uh, we might see our players starting to use already, so we're really excited about that. So you can find all the details for uh, that at our webs- uh, on our YouTube page at YouTube dot com slash dungeon dudes and you can also join us on tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on twitch you can check us out from 6 p.m to 9 p.m eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes and don't forget to watch our video episodes of the show on youtube which air on fridays after the show airs live on tuesdays we are also uh want to let you know that you can listen along with the show as a podcast now. So if you wanted to catch all of the first season or up to date on the second season, all of it is available as a podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Well, uh, with that, I say let us delve right back into the shadows. Drakenheim is no more. For 15 years, we foolishly believed the madness and mayhem of that crumbling city was confined to the ruins. We were wrong. Insidious horrors have crept out of the shadow of Drakenheim into a world unprepared for such nightmares. Tales of strange magic, swirling haze, and unspeakable terrors echo through the villages and towns surrounding that accursed place. Now, the Dusk Wardens, a new band of heroes, are tasked with driving out the seeping tendrils of the spreading darkness before it takes root. Welcome back to the Shadows of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they had ventured forth from the port city of Dransmond out onto Ash Bay to the small fishing village of Ashshafen. There, finding the local village folk to be strange, our heroes sought shelter nearby with the, at the invitation of the last sane man, sane man in Ashafen, telling them that the villagers of Ashafen now depart on a nightly basis to a distant cove for strange and unknowable purpose. Our heroes have followed the trail to this large cove where, allegedly, the village folk of Ashafen go. Here they have found an abandoned dock in a sandy cove over uh, covered by a yawning cliff face of hexagonal pillars of rock. Sending down one of the directions, our heroes have found a strange complex of similar construction to the elven ruins that they had seen before, though these covered with ash and dust flecked off through time and the passage of many years and perhaps numerous floods. Bits of webbing and cobwebs interwoven amongst the ash and debris that cover these rooms, most of them their purposes lost to time, until here, in the next chamber, our heroes have uncovered a strange sight indeed. For there is a large circular pedestal 
up against the semicircular side of one of these rooms. Thereon are several large metallic rings um, that are slowly rotating in, in the bowl-shaped depression at the center of the pedestal. As the rings rotate and shift, each covered in small, fine runes and inscription, a shimmering image of the globe itself appears before you. It shudders and shakes, hissing with a strange noise, in intermittent with this soft, purring hum. In the chamber that you are in, there is a doorway leading back to the north. What will you do? Um, Wilhelm has stepped up to this globe, and I want to examine for two things. There's two things that I want to know about this rotating globe. First of all, are the runes on it in Elven? And if so, can I read them? And the next thing is, if I look at the globe, can I find the area of the map that I would know as like where we are located? Or does the land masses match my, know my knowledge about the world layout? Or does this feel like it's mm. a different world? You recognize on this world, this map projected, the landmass of the continent. It is unmistakable. The crystal coastline, Illyria, and the inner and the the Middle Sea to the south, uh, Caspia, Westamar, the eastern and northern vales. Most of the maps that you have seen in your lifetime, Wilhelm, um, do not depict much beyond the continent. <laughs> I, I imagine that. Yeah. Um, and so, well, you have seen depictions of the continent that is what and it well it is known that the world is round actually seeing a map like this it takes you a moment to realize because the 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 map as a globe does not bear the inaccuracies that a map would nor a drawn map would actually have and as you examine closely this image is startlingly realistically rendered it, it is it, it does not resemble an artist's impression but rather the view of some great eye watching over the entire globe it would appear that the uh the elves have mapped out more of the world than anybody I've ever seen. This, this is showing parts of the map that I've never explored, nor have any of my fathers or my father's fathers or my, my ancestors. Nobody's, nobody's shown me this much of the world. I can see the, there we are. There's Ashafen. There's, there's the coast. There's, there's where Tierhaven is there. But it's showing everything beyond. The, who knows this much about the world? How do the elves have this sort of knowledge? And what about the ruins? Are the ruins in Elven at all? Or the the runes themselves? Or yeah, the runes. Yeah. I yes. Runes. Um, there are slight elvish runes that dance and hover in the air, and um, one of them is actually flashing with a um the the flashing of the rune itself is the elven word for warning uh, Rath Rudy uh, whatever this map is it's trying to warn us of something the the words here that are, are are speaking of of a warning. I don't know what to make of this. This is highly peculiar. I, I, I'd be lying if I said that a seeing a floating globe of our Earth here. I, I'm I'm nervous 
about this elven ruin. It seems to have advanced technology and magic. And uh, I am worried that we might run into another one of those horrible creatures. So I, I suppose be on the lookout. What do you make of this map, though? I'm... Uh, it's, Does it say anything about what is warning about? Because, I mean, general warnings, there's lots of danger around us currently. These these runes are hard to make out. I, I, I studied Elvin, but not to the depths of, of their ancient texts and lore. Is there anything else I can make from it other than a warning? The, the rune of warning hovers out along the edge of the pedestal itself. So it's some distance away from the, the image of the globe. It hovers in the air and connected to it are several other sigils that seem to be representation that at, at your best guess, they, they represent just uh, other words that say observe or look or see or um and and, and another that, that says scan um all and they all kind of form a line these runes and each has kind of been encircled by its in, in its own uh, circle of runes and separated out across the the floating field um wilhelm i'm wondering if we should have you touched it yet is it just like an I image mean, i try not to touch it's crazy I'll contraption. I'll touch it. Raph, you're magical. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I step back as Raph says that. I also step back. I'm like, no, you go ahead. You're the magical one here. Go on. I want to try to operate it. I want to mm. see if it spins or turns or moves. Um, how? How? Um, does the globe itself, can it turn? Um, if I reach towards it and try to touch it? If you reach towards it, the image feels slightly tangible. In fact, all the runes, even though they're insubstantial, there's a slight sense of haptic touch to each of them, as if you can grasp them and pull them. And when you reach out towards the globe, you it feels like a physical globe, and you can rotate it and turn it. So first, I want to rotate it. And I want to look through one of the runes, these separated runes, towards like Drakenheim. I want to turn the globe and kind of point it at where Drakenheim is right now. Yeah. So there, there's several runes. Uh, one, there's the one that says warning, the one that says look, observe, scan. Um, and uh, another that says message. Do so look. If, if, yeah, do if scan. Mom's like scan, no, look. No, look. Oh, uh, uh, rule number 51 do not tinker with things beyond your comprehension, Wrath. I believe in you, Wrath. You have magical powers. You can do it. <laughs> Don't lose more fingers or an entire hand this time. That's a, Be careful, Wrath. Be careful. Be careful, I but will. still do it. <laughs> I will look through scan. Okay. As you place your your eyes over over the the rune of scan. Um you feel it it's over your hand like almost like a spell is in your hand and this energy reaches over your hand and as you do so there is this pulsing in uh, these rippling circles pulse out from your hand over the globe where you hold your hand. Where do you hold your hand? Um, uh, where is it right now? Is it over the rune or is it just... Yeah, it's over the rune right now, but there's these rippling um, rippling pulses of energy coming out of your hand as they, you move towards the... Your hand comes towards the globe. 
I'm going to start to hover it over uh, Ash Shafin. As the ripples circulate out from your hand, they pulse outwards, and as they do so, these glinting motes of octarine light illuminate in the surface. And several of them start to reach out, and these you see these strands, and this gaseous mist hangs over. And as you start to lift your hand, you realize that where you're revealing your hand, the radius around your hand, it, it corresponds to where the haze is. As you pull your hand away from Ashafen, you, the, the areas that are lit up with octarine light, they fade. And as you bring it more over the coast and the, the Dran River, the Dran River lights up. And you follow back along the river towards Drakenheim. And it just is just this just thick welt <laughs> where your where your hand is. Check to your haven. So I hover over to your haven. As you, as you bring your hand over, there's some small moats, but as you, as you head out towards Tearhaven, um, things start to flash, and there's a bit of a hum, and, and, all, and several runes flicker up on, on the, um, on, in, before you, and Wilhelm, you can see the, the runes say, Leyline Channel Lost. Uh... Rath, it appears you lost the channel. Uh, whatever you did, you have possibly broken it. Uh, Get the channel back and recheck my hometown. Should have followed rule 51, Rath. It's simple. The one that I said earlier, I don't have to repeat it. I just said it. Uh. Um, I want to grab another rune. It just totally ignoring Wilhelm. Okay. Just grab another rune. Do look. I do look. As you press look, um, two runes pop up on, on, on before you. The, the first one, uh, it, the rune, it is the rune that says scrying initiated. And then it says, please wait. And then the runes begin to swirl around, and after a moment, the runes fade, and it says, the runes say again, planetary scrying failed, cloud watcher lens unbound. Uh, is this all in Elven? So am yes. I like standing over Wrath's shoulder, like relaying? Yeah. I'm like, I don't understand what I'm reading, but I'm reading it to you. Sounds cloud like Cloud watcher broken. lens. What is the Cloud Watcher lens? Have have either of you heard Wrath, is this an academy thing? My uh I have an idea, but it may take some time. Do we want to continue to attempt to use this lost device? I mean, well, if it's been here for a while, I think we can come back to it. It's really interesting to see if some stuff's working and some I stuff's could, not try to cast identify and see if I could learn how to use it maybe a bit more accurately but it could take some time mm. Bruce can show me the way how long do I think Monty would, would identify give me some kind of idea on how to use this or operate it if this is a magical item then it certainly could I'll help you translate if, if you need the assistance. I start to bring out um, small treats out of my bag, including bits of brain. And, uh, and I start wiping stuff on the ground <laughs> and creating a little pile. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I start to flick it. And hmm. uh, I call to Bruce. Bruce, help me identify. Oh, great master. Knowledge beyond the cosmos. Help me understand this foreign device, this machine of man or elf. 
Probably elf. It looks elven. As yeah. as the spell comes into focus and Bruce imparts you the knowledge, you now have the ability to read the runes translated for you. And you understand that this magical item is a tremendously powerful version of a crystal ball. It operates along similar premises in that it can be used to cast the scrying spell but rather than targeting individuals it targets locations and much like a crystal ball it can be used to determine additional types of information it seems that this some crystal balls have telepathy some have true sight some have other purposes it seems that this crystal ball is capable of sending messages and is capable of detecting something else. But the spell that it de- uses to detect something else is not a spell that you've seen before. But the best translation that you can come up with it is it is a spell that would be best equated to be called a detect delirium spell. However, there, as you use the magic of the spell, you realize that this artifact, for it could be called that in no other description, is reliant on an external artifact to focus its power and extend its power across the entire planet. That power is missing. Further, can I determine, or can we determine, how old this ruin is, approximately? If it comes, if it was something built, the elves have not, there is no recollection of elves building structures like this in, in the recorded histories of humanity. So, that would make it well over... 2,000 years old. My friends, how could a device designed to detect delirium with such purpose exist lifetimes before the meteor struck? I'm beginning to think that the history of the elves might be a key to uncovering the secrets of delirium. For this is the second elven ruin that we've stumbled upon, both ancient beyond measure, and both with items in them. The first one had a a rift, an actual rift between worlds, and this one has a delirium-detecting globe of the world. I don't yet know what our answer is, but it appears that investigating these elven ruins might prove to reveal secrets about delirium that the Academy might desperately need if they are to help with this problem. Well, especially thinking about if this is a delirium detector, the Academy will find this very valuable. If we can clear out this area and get the Academy's knowledge, inform them about this device, perhaps they can send a team and reverse engineer the technology so that they could build their own delirium detector. This could be incredibly valuable. I do have one concern that's still pressing on my mind, though. This has the ability to message who? Yes, you, you've in, so far you've invoked the runes for look and scan, but you have not evoked the messages for the, the runes for warning and message. Wrath, if I tried something reckless, what would you say? I would quote Rule 51. We've already I, been, do not I, tinker with things beyond your comprehension. I, I just wanted to. You you're right. Against you. No, you're right. I shouldn't. No, don't look into it. It was my attempted humor. You should well, obviously no, do this recklessly. No, it is. I it is the rules. 
Wilhelm, oh, come on, Wilhelm. I think it's time for you to step a little bit outside your rules. You can obviously see that this is a tool. It doesn't seem like anything dangerous right now, but how are you we going to know if we don't tinker? Rat, the, how do we learn if you don't tinker? One of the strangest rules my father put in this list was rule number 70, 72. Trust your instincts, even if it conflicts with other rules. My instincts tell me that we could discover a lot more if we sent a message out. It, I might suggest the reason why I say I, I might do it is I might suggest we send it out in Elven and see if any we get a response from any elves out there who, who may still have a connection to this device. Why don't we send a message to ourselves? I do we know yet if this device can choose who the message goes to? Like a we won't like know a, until we find like, out. Like a to-do a test list message. Like a test ah. Like a, uh, a test send. But what and, if we can only send one and what if we can't choose? I say we let's tap the rune and see what options it gives us. I'm going to attempt to grab the message rune. Okay. Yeah, just fiddle, just, just, just grab I, it and just turn it, and then you is, got it. It's, is and then this just, just hit it? Is this what magic feels like? Is it doing anything? <laughs> when you when you tap it, it lights up. Oh. Okay. And several other runes appear before you, Wilhelm. One says first, cannot establish ethereal network connections, li uh, limited to local signals. Restore witnessing runes at Celestial Nexus Tower. And as you light it up, you see that what what lights up it are on the map in the Elfmire where the Elfmire is, it lights up. A location lights up there. But then the location also of the lighthouse lights up nearby. And there is another light that appears over Drakenheim, but it has a rune over it that simply says broken. And beyond the beyond, there are several other runes that appear. Their location flickering that says broken, 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 broken. Um, I, as if it's I, trying to find something else, but can't find it. Can I take mental notes? So, okay, my immediate assumption when this happens is that it is showing me all the elven towers. Can I take a mental, like, not even a mental note? Can I, like, quickly draw? I'm going like, to write a physical note. There, yeah, the, right. there are one, the one in Elfmire, mm -hmm. and the one by the lighthouse, and the one in Drakenheim actually have a point, an anchor point on the earth. But the yeah. other runes that say broken are just fluttering in the distance with no anchor point associated uh. with them. So with the Drakenheim one, is it a location within Drakenheim or is it just in general Drakenheim? Yes, but from this vantage point, where specifically in Drakenheim that would be connected to, it, 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 we don't have street map data here. <laughs> no, I was just wondering if it was like on the tower or something like, like the Academy Tower. That could be a reasonable conclusion. Okay. So, seemingly, the message is to send to the other towers. Um, hmm. And we know that there's nobody, hopefully, in the Alvinmeyer Tower. I worry about sending it to the lighthouse, though. We don't know who's hanging out there right now. I We have a mission already to infiltrate that tower so that is not it's not important for us to message that and drakenheim i would sooner not send a message to drakenheim for fear of issues mm. arising it wrath what do you make of this I, i'm no i'm i'm new to this sort of technology it appears magical in in nature but it seems like the signal's broken. Is is this something you think can be repaired? I don't fully comprehend how it works. I, this this magic is 
obviously eons old and far more powerful than even what we have today. The, the, the magic it's, you use is eons old. Yeah, but it's it's like um, it's written in a different script. Um, Bruce is very uh, intuitive with his magic. This is very created. Uh, it's it's a totally different understanding. I mean, with the Academy's help, maybe. Um, but what I can surmise is that this machine relies on an external power source for some of its abilities. Hmm. Is there an obvious place in this immediate vicinity where this other thing artifact goes or is it external like is it at one of these towers does it light up like the other um one going error when warning issue. when the message to rest- th- there was a message that popped up a moment ago that said restore witnessing runes at celestial nexus tower and there was a line that was drawn from here to the lighthouse we need to bring the lighthouse back online in order to send a signal. Hmm. I see. Does- then if there's a way that we can turn this thing off so it doesn't draw any more attention, at least we can keep it a bit of a secret until we can get there. And then that can be where we head on over after we uh, investigate where these uh, villagers may be going. Hmm. I like it, Rudy. I think. Yes, Wrath, shut it down. <laughs> off. Uh, no, off no, an line. elven. There, elven. There, there's, there doesn't appear to be a rune for off. The only other rune that you can touch is the one that says warning. I'll touch that one. I, I'm um, sure it's <laughs> turned it off. I step up next to Wrath and an elven, I go, turn off. <laughs> It, I I nothing, throw nothing a I I want to throw like a crude sheet over it. <laughs> Is there something I could just like toss over it just to kind of like well, poorly hide it? What if we touch the warning rune? Touch it. I mean, we've explored the rest of this thing. Why not? Yes, and then I I back away. I'm gonna back. <laughs> but I'm gonna back yeah, away. I'll touch. Yeah. It's maybe like a uh, some kind of warning system. Um, Perhaps it will warn us. Hmm. As you touch the rune, the map suddenly shudders and animates, and another series of elven runes appear that say, Warning, anomaly is detected. And the map shifts as pulses and rings of energy reach outward and hit on. First, it goes right to Drakenheim. <laughs> And it just and it just lights it up red, and then it follows down the river, and to Ash Bay, and it pings at another spot, in the midst of Ash, almost in the middle of Ash Bay, and it concentrates there, and it pings it. It's it's not as big a red as the area around Drakenheim, but it's a strong red seed, and then it pulses outwards and shows smaller red dots kind of in the intervening area several in in dransman like smaller little seedlings and then it pulses out again and it says warning um danger planar rifts possible chance for eldritch crossings 3.9 percent Rule number 55, write it down. Um, can I jot down like a quick map of the coast and like where the ping is in comparison to some landmarks? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I jot down and I, I kind of make a crude map in my book of um, the the major ping. Was there one in Elfmire? There was a notable one in Elfmire, but... As it pings outward, it could be showing you the location of almost every piece of delirium on this side of the Crystal Coast. Some of the dots are so faint. Mm. 
and for the most part compared to the ones in Drakenheim and this like the one in Drakenheim dwarfs everything else Mm -hmm. it's no not even a comparison in fact if you were to step far enough away from the map you would just think that it was a single welt and it's not until you get a bit closer that you can see the larger kind of satellite indication that there's something there for um for in ash bay and then these smaller faint little bits of this and the the light flashes this between octarine and red Wrath, do you think these are the spots where Bruce is saying it's a thin spot? That makes sense. He found that it was a a place between worlds, as this machine describes an eldritch crossing. I would need to reach out to River. She will be very pleased to know that there is a machine that can find these credible sources of delirium. Well, we won't be able to let her know until we get out of this haze, but I think it should be one of the first things we do once we figure out how to get out of here. Agreed. We can use our stone of sending and give her an update as soon as we discover more all right boys i say we head forward and uh note wilhelm added to your map this is where the the globe is but we got to keep pushing forward if we're gonna see where these paths lead maybe to the fish folk maybe not maybe to the villagers who knows I, i am concerned they those creatures followed us here Although we dispatched of them quickly, they may be considered missing among the villagers. I don't know if they were together, but it is deeply concerning that creatures of that magnitude roam these waters. Mm. And for the, these, these fishing folk, it seems quite strange. Well... Who knows what, what's got them, what they're in league with. Remember when they talked about people walking into the water and coming back? We knew that was happening uh, down over in, uh, oh, what's it called? Dran- <laughs> Transman? Not Transman. Um, Alvin did speak of it. Yeah. Ash- Chatsburg. Chatsburg, that's it. One of them. <laughs> um, so it's not far off to think maybe the fish folk might be involved in this. And I mean, if that's what those were, or at least allies to them, then we could if, probably expect a little bit of fishiness coming up. If anything tries to eat my brain, I'm going to be very upset. Just don't go get near any mouths. It's fair. It's it's a fair um, concern. Well, shall we press on then? Uh, agreed. I start to if- head down this. Yeah, same. Hallway. Be cautious on your guard, friends. Okay. I take out my axes. You can all roll me a d6. <laughs> of course we can. I know I can. I rolled a six. A One. Two. Oh. <laughs> well, I was overruled. <laughs> yes. As you... Who is opening the door? There's a door? Uh, I will. I will. Yeah. So I rolled the one. Okay. (laughs) Pulling open what remains of the door, there is another chamber beyond. This one also fraught with slightly shimmering webs. Two pillars hold this room up with another, with a hallway leading off to the north and another doorway leading off to the east as you step into this room the geometry of this room gives you a headache the curved corner here looks curved to begin with but it's and on our map here it is depicted as a, depicted as a curve 
but it actually consists of two 90 degree angles that connect with each other. So this room is formed. You can see that in this room, there are several, all 90 degree corners, but it is a single room with five 90 degree corners. Uh, this room upsets me. Hurts my head to look at. I. What am I seeing right now? What is this unworldly place? This room gives you a headache. The webs that stretch across this room shimmer and glint as if, and some of them suddenly end connected to nothing simply no a web anchored to nothing at all just hovering in the air at an oblique angle i want to try to run my hand across the wall <laughs> and start by the door and and see if these walls are real the walls are very real and very solid, but for a moment, which hand are you using? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously the good one. You know, I can't use the bad one when I'm checking out this wall. <laughs> um, so I'm dragging my left hand across the wall. Just I, I picture just walking around. As you drag your hand through the wall and bring it back, there's a strand of web stuck to your hand that was not there before. Uh... Do the pillars seem normal? I'm, I'm, I walk up to one of the pillars and I'm gonna, I look at Wrath and then I like start to just touch the pillar and I'm gonna move around it. As you touch the, as you look at the pillar, these pillars are two-dimensional. They are flat. They are completely flat and not round at all. But when you place your hand up against it, the flatness as you move your hand simply just continues. And no matter which way you look at it, it, it it's almost like the pillar is paper thin. But as you walk towards, from whatever direction you look at it, you it always faces you. <laughs> Rudy, are you as unsettled as I? Uh, do I have a right to be unsettled in here? Is this? Of course you do. I'm just wondering if uh, we need to take a step back and uh, test out the the limits of this room a bit before we go any further. I, I don't like this room. It's are the mm. are the cobwebs like? Do they seem fresh? Like like a newly spun web? Much fresher than the ones in the earlier rooms. Hmm. Guys, come back here for a moment. Come back into the hallway. Uh, come back. Wilhelm and Wrath, as you turn to leave, the two of you can both make dexterity saving throws. Oh, no! Does evasion help me? <laughs> Tell me what you got. The dex, isn't it? Ooh, 18. I got a 21. The webs that were not there before peel off your bodies as you walk out of the room and there is a low rattle and a hiss as all of you can make me a perception check right now <laughs> seven uh, 20 F 15 well as Wilhelm and Wrath, as you go to leave the room, appearing out of the pillar, stepping out through the webs, is a milk-white spider of monstrous th size and ethereal composition. Its body is crystalline milky, and you can see all of its internal organs sh just shuffling around inside through its translucent carapace. And as it comes forward and as Wilhelm, as you pry yourself out of the web, it latches back with its spike-like limbs to attack. 
roll for initiative. Oh, oh goodness. Creepy spider. Creepy spider from another dimension. <sighs> oh, spiders. <laughs> It's the uh, arachnophobia warning. Uh, we have to give. Uh... Yeah. Wilhelm, what you got? I got an 18. Wrath? 13. And Rudy? Three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wilhelm, you are first to act. Uh, turning to see the spider, I let out a cowardly yelp. Then I gather myself, step towards the spider, and I'm going to. Uh, so it just it, it just kind of crawls out of nowhere. Yeah, I hates. Yeah, it, and Will, it, Wilhelm exclaims loudly that he hates spiders. It as appears as if it slipped out of a hole that was never there. No, <laughs> things need to stop doing this around me. I'm going to attack it with my moon touched rapier. I get a 17 to hit. That's a hit. All right, and I'm going to sneak attack it. It's going to be 18 damage. Oh, ow. So as it crawls out of nowhere, I let out a yelp. I turn with a flick of my cape, and I, I poke it in one of its eyes. And then I pull the blade out, and I'm actually going to move back. And I'm like, there's a giant spider! And I, I run back out into the hallway behind uh, my friends, and I'm going to then fire a shot at it from here. Alrighty. Twenty-three to hit for an additional. Oh, nice! Ten damage. It screeches. It is bloodied and wounded, though barely in this world. Your attacks have struck have struck true and wounded the beast, and bits of whatever fluid makes up the internal components of its body, a silvery liquid, start leaking out from its wounds. It's wounded, friends. Finish it. As I cower in the back. Not cower. Wrath, it is your turn. Um, Bruce, seeing the blood from a creature from another dimension, um, rushes after it to lap it up. Um, and I'm going to take a shot of eldritch power at it. Um, getting a 25 oh. to hit. <laughs> wow. Um, for uh, 13 damage. The blast of forceful power streaks through the planes and bursts its body apart. <laughs> oh, that did it. And is there anything left? Is there like pieces everywhere? The pieces of it are dispersed. Some of them fall into the cracks of reality and others of them shudder and twitch on the ground. Bruce begins to eat them. Anything else? Um, there's nothing else I can see in the room. Correct? That is correct. Um, then I will consider myself, uh, I, you know, job well done. Proud of me. From whence it was blown <laughs> out of reality, almost as if no! reality corrects itself there is a shudder in the air and another one of the creatures appears but and then another as if as it shifts into reality it shifts back as as if almost for a moment you see this rent in space and time these spiders are almost identical in appearance and and mirror like in their movements as if a fracture of possible reality has split their bit very being uh and so the one it 
uh, rushes forward and to attack Rudy and one uh, to Wilhelm. <laughs> it's behind me, isn't it? <laughs> Again. I've killed it, Wilhelm. I don't know what you're... Oh, God! <laughs> uh, getting a critical hit against uh, Wilhelm. No! Uh, and a 15 against Rudy. Nope. Uh, so Wilhelm buddy uh, that is going to be 19 points of piercing damage You're and so I need a constitution saving throw uh, I'm going to half that damage okay uh, what's half of 19 uh, that would be what uh, do I take 11 or 10 uh, uh, half nine of 19 and half, half nine. of 19 or yeah. sorry 9 nine or 10 9 9 <laughs> this is lower Probably, right just, and yeah, then Wilhelm I, think... I need a constitution saving throw ah uh, good uh ooh, I got an eighteen. An Good ethereal job. poison courses through your body uh, uh, oh. from the fang like bite of this spider. Um and as it does so, as it's as it pulls back, there's this moment of where there's an echo of Wilhelm that and a shudder of an echo of the spider that flashes just in front of both of you for a moment of the of the spider utterly like as if Wilhelm had succumbed to the poison and collapsed. And like, there's this image that just flutters in space of the spider starting to wrap up Wilhelm's body and no! disappear about down hole. But Wilhelm's still there. I, Wilhelm, you take 10 points of poison damage though, even though uh, on the successful save. Oh man. Uh, Wilhelm screams in terror at the sight of his own demise. And, and Rudy, even though the one, uh, it's pure, it go it blocks right off your ar- bounces off your armor there's a shudder in space as it pierces through your neck and you see a, a, a reflection of yourself dropping to the ground dead <laughs> do we all see it like yeah. do i see yeah. them both die in alternate realities or yeah. in some kind of <laughs> ghost wilhelm <laughs> ghost rudy no uh, Rudy, will carry my stuff. Uh, 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 and and with, with that, finally, uh, I uh, one more creature oh. sh- <laughs> slides in to reality. One for each of us. Rudy, it's your turn. All right. Um, Rudy was kind of ready to do this from the beginning, and she's just like, webs are flammable, right? And I'm going to firebolt the webs around. Okay. Say, Bruce, you better get out of there. <laughs> so kind of further back, and I hope to set them on fire. Okay, make an attack roll. You do have disadvantage because the spider is right in front of you. Uh, so with disadvantage, it's a 16. That's still a hit. Give me the damage. 10 fire damage. This section of web here is burned away. And as that section of web is burned away, the spiders shudder and screech for a moment as if the webs are the tether to the possible realities. And as they fall down and and collapse and burn away, the various glinting, uh, the you see that the the realms of possibility woven by these spiders begin to dissipate into one single hole. Gentlemen, I think we found the source of our problems here. Um, Spiders? I think it's the spiders. And with that, um, I also get an attack um, as well. Because when I do a cantrip, I get a an attack, attack so as a bonus action. Yep. I take a swipe at the spider uh, for twenty five <laughs> to hit. That's a hit. Uh, for <gasps> twelve damage. Nice. The axe blade cracks into the into the spider, and for a moment it shudders, uh, going through again. Like click 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 all the different possibilities of how your axe could have impaired it in one version, swip it, swiping off its limb, another hitting into its face, another breaking through its abdomen, 
and the and you see this spider almost scramble as it tries to find the realities where it's not wounded. <laughs> This nice. is amusing. Look at how many times I heard that spider in so many different realities. This is fun. It's just like regular Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we go to the top of the round with Wilhelm. Uh, <laughs> Wilhelm getting surprised from behind by this giant spider that's also just appeared. I spin around and kind of dodge poorly out of the way of its attack because it still got me, but avoiding some of it. And bring my blade up into its underside getting a 18 to hit and i'm going to use my sneak attack on that as well which yeah 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 you got you you got houdini to actually sneak off of uh doing 18 more damage nice so what was the total from the two hits? The sneak uh, that attack? Was just... That was the sneak attack and the base damage, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, as you stab up through its abdomen, there's another... Uh, there's a fl- gl- brief glimpse of another version of you that stabs up from the top. <laughs> oh, man. Kebab. I, um... Oh, there's not really anywhere to run, is there? Um, <laughs> I'm going to... <laughs> Step back five feet, and I'm going to to fire at the same spider. Nice. Um, getting a twenty-two for ten more damage. Um, as as you go through, the, you 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 reach out your arm to shoot it. And you almost see several faint copies of your arm in different aiming positions, and several bolts strike several of the different spiders. Um, several of them miss, but again, the reality snaps into focus for the one where you hit it right in the jaw. Is it still up? It's still up. I, I stand on guard. Wrath, it is your turn. The, uh, the webs... That are burning in the other room. Do they? Do they also have webs in the previous room with the, the globe? There are four clusters of webs. One here, one here, and one here. These four primary ethereal clusters of web. Okay. Um, following um, Rudy's advice, I'm going to step up into beside Bruce. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to, and this is what I want to do. I want to reach into my robe of useful items and I want to rip off a bullseye lantern filled and lit. And then I want to huck it at the, (laughs) and crash it into the webs. Great idea. Give me an attack roll. I rolled an eight. I don't know what I add to it. Uh, the la- uh, my proficiency um, with lanterns does yeah, that count? And, and technically, because you're you're you add your dexterity modifier nine. Okay, so the lantern smashes in the ground um, and doesn't quite catch the <gasps> the the webs on on the fire. So, uh, and technically, this would be rolled with disadvantage. Oh. Uh, but since this well, is the let's lower, see of the how two much rolls, worse I can do? Yeah. Well, I can make it a six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, it's it's bad. So the lantern starts it and a it small gets flame, stuck in the, and it just sits in. The, yeah, it the gets netting. yeah, it gets stuck in the web, and it's just lit. Yes, it gets stuck in the web. It's lit, but it's not. Uh, it hasn't caught the web on fire. Uh, 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 yeah. and then I proceed to panic. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. Um. Uh. Uh, oh, with my bonus action, I want to cast Hex from my spell storing ring. I have a first level Hex okay. jammed in there, and I'm going to cast it on this one that's right in uh, in front of me. And it's it rolls disadvantage on strength. Let's okay. do strength. It's there is a shiver me. and a shudder in reality as the spider in front of you, Wrath, uh, 
another one of its multi-dimensional possibilities appears in view. <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, and, the, and the two spiders from different directions, as if they don't even know that the other is there, both attack you. Uh, one of them gets a 10 to hit, one gets an 11 to hit. Um, I, they both miss. Okay. Um, this spider dives forward towards Wilhelm. Um, it can walk through Houdini's space because Houdini's a small creature and bites Wilhelm, getting a 20 to hit. Oh, come on. Yes. Uh, yes. For seven points of damage, and I need a constitution saving throw, Wilhelm. I'm going to take the seven <laughs> just because I'm going to half the poison. Can I half the poison damage on an uh, attack? No, you can't half the poison damage, but you can half the... Uh... Oh, well, then I'll half the damage that I just took. Okay. Um, oh, good. Con save. I get a four. Sometimes you get really lucky, though. It it's another 14 saves. points of poison damage, Wilhelm. You know... I've heard. I've heard. As, that... as the poison starts to sink... Wilhelm, no! Into my veins, I, I pull away and try and like I squeeze the wound and try to get the poison out, and I'm gonna roll a luck point. Okay. Ha, ah, now it's an eight. Okay. <laughs> Still a failure. Uh the the, the poison see uh, it's too late. It's too late, Wrath. After it bites blood. you, you're like, Ugh, uh. What do you uh can you update your hit points for us? What are you at? I have, oh, yeah. uh, I'm I'm at nine. Okay. Oh, no. Well, fortunately, this other spider, as it finishes the bite, it disappears. All realities of it disappear. And the other spider rushes forward towards you uh, to bite you again. Wilhelm, this time mm -hmm. only getting a six. And then it collapses out of reality as well. And this spider collapses out of reality too, leaving only one remaining. Rudy, it is your turn. Now that the spider's out of the way, I'm just going to blow these webs away. So I'm going to uh, use another firebolt. Still with disadvantage? Uh, correct, because you are engaged by the... Or actually, no, with the hard corner there, you're actually not engaged by that spider. So no, it wouldn't be with disadvantage. Okay. Uh, 15. To That's hit. a hit. <laughs> Ooh, and I'm hitting the one that's yeah right in front of me. Um, oh, uh, sixteen fire damage. It almost uh, it ignites with the lantern, and there's a small <laughs> explosion, and the and the webs are entirely consumed. Roll me a d six. Woo! Three. Okay. The uh, the flames spread over to this set of webs as well. Uh, uh going you know no, another few to start start burning them. These two areas of web, uh, the flames are actually starting to die down from them uh, because they're almost totally burned away. The only mm -hmm. set of webs are the ones remaining in the globe room now. Um, and with that, uh, anything else, Rudy? Um, I can't. I guess I can't reach it around the corner. I assume. Uh, no, you'd have to. You'd have to move. Uh, you know what? I'm good. Okay. Wilhelm, it is your turn. Uh, Wilhelm runs over and he's he has some gear in his bag for lighting fires and candles and he has a tinder box. Uh, he's going to do whatever it takes to, to set these webs on fire. So he's just rifling Alrighty. around his bag, like he pulls out a candle, a tinder box. He's like, ah, and he finagles a fire on these webs and then backs away. With the last set of webs set alight? The the last remaining image of the spider, as if it's tether to this reality, is broken, shudders out, and the headache that you had of this room disappears as the corner rounds back off and becomes normal again. <laughs> oh, I, I slump over onto the ground. I'm just going to sit in this hallway for a while. I walk over to you and grab your ointment and just rub it on your face. On Thank his you. wound. On his wound. <laughs> no, yeah, on, his face. on the arm. No, <laughs> not right. on the okay. face. <laughs> all right. Some moisturizer. I, just, I put a, a little bit all over, and I'm like, "You feeling better?" 
Uh, is that 13 hit points I get back? 18? 18. 18. 18. <laughs> I feel... <clears throat> I, I actually... I'm going to take another bit of the ointment. Need more? Yeah. I rub more little, on you. A little more. Yeah, just, we, all we're all kind of scooping like, on, from the jar and helping <laughs> rub it. Everybody, everybody rub me with ointment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds like Rudy, a lovely spot. Uh, good thinking. That was... Uh, these creatures seem to prey uh, on those that travel between worlds. Um, Wilhelm, good news. You weren't being swallowed. You were getting bitten. Is that better for you? I saw myself die many times. I, I'm sick of these ruins, Wrath. I'm sick of them. Oh. They'll get better. Luckily, like, we uh, have more to explore. <laughs> uh, I'm, I know. I I'm okay. I, I'll, I'll carry on. I give you a good like slap on the back. And be like, that's the spirit. Come on, let's let's see what's uh, a little bit further from here. Well, this mystery won't investigate itself, I suppose. So, off we go. It's true. What would we be without our fearless investigator? And I say it in like a like a mom kind of way. Like, oh, <laughs> thanks, Rudy. It's. I will continue to investigate these mysteries for the good of the people. Okay. There you are. There is a single closed door. Um, right over here. Uh, and then as you head up north, the hallway actually does not extend too much further from here. For it is just a small alcove at the end of which is a statue of a thin, short, elven man with a, ta with a stone tablet that he's holding to his chest that, with his arms crossed over in front of it. He has, the statue is wearing a pair of circular glasses, and the elven man has a small, distinguished mustache and short curled hair i like this elf style <laughs> seems to be a proper well-kept elf uh, i'm going to approach the statue is there any name on there uh, that's what i'm looking for i'm looking to see if there's any inscription or any hmm. any words there there's an inscription on the tablet and it says the inscription begins and Wilhelm you, as you look there's a faint glow to the tablet and it actually doesn't it's not connected to the rest of the statue you might be able to pull it out hmm uh, I'm gonna go for it I reach up and I'm going to try to remove the tablet you pull the statue up there is a rune on the front of it it is um, the elven rune for listen I, I hold the tablet up to my ear you hold it up and there is a voice that comes through the tablet it's speaking Elvin. I translate. It, it's garbled in some parts and some moments. Breaking up here and there. The tablet is slightly damaged. There's some cracks in it. And it says, To you, 10,000 years from now, My name is Valtar Bainmoon. This is a message. It is part of a system of messages. As I walk on the unfamiliar forests of this new world, I contemplate the gap on the edge of thought wherein lies Arcadia, distant and long forgotten. The true measure of life is memory. Looking back, it suffuses all our lives like lightning. What is the value of so long a life without 
such a wondrous treasure. Maybe you will remember. This is a message, and part of a system of messages. Please pay attention to it. And then the message ends. Rath, I'm going to just ask, were there parts of the message that were missing because of the cracks? Slightly, but it was a word or two that you could fill in. It was. It felt okay. mostly complete. I say we hold on to this. This might be incredibly valuable. I feel like... I feel like the elves are trying to tell us something from 10,000 years ago. Hmm. Strange. It is strange. And Voltar Bane Moon is what his name was. Voltar Bane Moon. I, I've never read about a Voltar Bane Moon, and I, I've read a few books about about the history of our lands. What, what about Arcadia? Does that make any sense to you? Uh, would I know? Like, I've never heard any of this before. It's nowhere in the history books. No. Raph, anything in the in the in the arcane lore? We could reach out to scholars. Rather, are you are you trained in arcana and history? I skipped those. Okay, classes. So so there is nobody in the there is none of you in the party are proficient in elven history and arcana. I have two of three. Gotta have all three. Looking for all three. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I have none of those. <laughs> I read a lot of history books, but it's about Westamar history. Yeah. I don't know anything about Arcana history or magical, magical history. history. No, goodness, no. I could pretend to be someone that knows a lot about history. I mean, that no, sounds like mind. your your whole mo. So. We should take it back to River and see what she says. I'm sure she has proficiencies in, in lots of ma- many things that could help us with this tablet. I mean, Raph, you said you skipped those classes at the Academy, yes? Oh, River yes, is, is well known to have been a far better student than you. That's why she's come so far in such a short time, and you haven't, correct? How are you saying you've met her a handful of times? How yeah, can you surmise that she's a better student than me? Well, when I talk about magic, you seem confused. She seems on top of it. That's the My general. So if we bring intuition. this to River, <laughs> then, then perhaps she can solve the mysteries. Isn't that true, yeah, Rath? Sure. River can do everything. River can solve the mysteries. River can deal with the rat problem. It oh, appears that, that way, doesn't it? River can go and do all this trudging through water. Oh, that's us again. Perhaps if you had paid River, attention more in school can... and not, you know, been talking to your cat the whole time. <laughs> yes, Bruce. <laughs> when he's asleep. <laughs> All right, boys. You know, no fun, no fun. Let's uh, let's see behind this door right here. And I go and I open this door. Hmm. The academic studies of the academy are mere comparisons. These tablet histories. Who cares about? <laughs> As Wrath speaks, studies. behind the door is. I imagine you're like standing behind. Is me, a just similar like- gateway to the one that you saw in the ruins in Elfmire, but it is Ugh. broken, and apart from a small flicker of energy that hums softly in the air, what magic was here is long gone. Close the door again. I say, Wrath, you stay away from this room. No I more of that from you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you march your butt back on the other way, and we're going to go find these fish people. And I, like, scoot both of you, like away we'll, we'll save it for when the academy comes and checks out the globe back this way. getting lectures mm-hmm. about I, I, not studying I, and I'm not allowed to deal with their cane knowledge and like, <laughs> I'm sure. yes, Bruce, I, right before we go no they, they, they are right they 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 are they are, they are right to be scared <laughs> I take one last Grumbling. peek in the room. Is there anything else in the room beyond that? Is there any anything look of value? 
ash and dust. All right. I I walk behind Rath and I mockingly just as he's mumbling, I'm like, you know, if we had a good wizard and it could cast proper spells and, you know, help us and I'm just like jabbing him <laughs> on. <laughs> Oh, the, why don't we just talk to our cat some more? That'll solve everything. <laughs> These so, beyond so rude. the remainder of this chamber is just dust and ruin. The remainder of these chambers, there seems to be nothing else here. Um, as we go out, can I take these broken doors and kind of put them back up? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. That way, hopefully, nobody wanders in here anytime soon. All right. So. Okay. So, you are now back out on the beaches of the cove. Which way would you like to go from here? Now, shall we take the the swimming way up, or shall we take the, the dry way? If- well... If I listen, can I hear anything in this cove? Any distant voices, noises, or echoes? Give me a perception check. Fourteen. At first you think that there's a very loud ocean wind. Like the the cove with the way the ocean wind is, it creates a natural sort of um, rumble. But then you realize that's not the wind. There's a raspy, loud breathing coming from this direction. Hmm. I I say we approach with caution. Um, The whole of the beach here is littered with broken rock and the bones of large fish, sharks, crabs, and even skulls, humans, and other half-human, half-fish things, horses, other things stripped and bleached bare of all meat, scattered all about, bone fragments in the sand of the cove. Now, boys, I don't know if these just washed up here or if the thing that's breathing over there may have eaten them, but I say, Wilhelm, do you want to take the sneaky way in? If, if you'd like, I could just move to those group, the group of rocks up there and see if I could see further ahead and let you guys know if it's safe. What's the light like in this room? Uh, this area is well illuminated. It's, okay. it, it, um, I think you, you proceeded through the evening. So mm-hmm. it, sun is, is going down, but the, the light from the moon and the stars and the little bit of light that you have carries well through here. There's no, na- there's no, uh, fire or lanterns or anything else illuminating anything, though. Mm. Uh, I, c- I can see in this sort of darkness, it's caves and underground that is the problem, really. Mm. Uh, All right, take a look. Um, I'm going to sneak and hide behind these rocks and try to get a, a good view of the, the area. Yeah, um, from here, what you can see is that the cove progresses in what might be two, perhaps three different directions. There is a stream of water that is flowing out from a brook here across sandy waters and then back out into the ocean. And then there is a large stone pillar here that divides this other pathway in two. It might end, so it might just be one large pathway that continues all for further back. Looking around in the sand, there are large reptilian track prints uh, and trailing pathways all through the sand heading up in this direction of some extremely large creature that might have four reptilian feet and a tail. I um, I'm going to continue to sneak, and I'm going to move into this sort of rubble here, trying to stay out of sight, and like peer a little further beyond the rocks. Okay, as you peer further back, the 
a much larger room is uh you can see a much larger cavern behind you um there are the number of rocky bones that block through these passages is staggering um broken and cracked skulls of sharks even perhaps whale bones back here and as you look back it continues further um it's quite dark past here but it is visible and there um languishing upon a pile of filth and bones is a titanic creature it is a massive dragon-like body covered in scales four limbs and a tail almost the size of a barn and it has five snaking heads that end in reptilian maws the tangled heads languishly lay out splayed on the beach ostensibly asleep without making any sound i sneak back to where my friends can see me and i give them the the like be very quiet and and i beckon them as you move backwards give me a stealth check i get a 26 okay you step lightly back to your friends I start to move forward. You want us to come, Wilhelm, in your head. Uh, there's a very large monster that seems... To, I, I can respond to you, right? Or no, no. I can't. No. no. Oh, okay. But... Uh, I, I nod. <laughs> um, yeah, I start to sneak towards... Sneaky, sneaky. As you guys get around me, I kind of huddle you in and I point to like the direction. There is there is a large, large sleeping monster just beyond those rocks. Sh- should we try to go past it? I like, mean, you're around sneaky, it? But I'm not. Sorry? I said you're sneaky, but I'm not. No, I mean there's another path. There's there's the water. Yeah, we could, I, we could I take we, the water. I say we take the water. Is there a boat we can put over us? Now, try that again. The 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 need for the boat will be unnecessary. You can breathe underwater thanks to river. Oh wait, that was me. That was me that bestowed the gift of breathing underwater to you both. I'm sorry I didn't pay attention in class studying weird tablets from the past, but I gave you the ability to breathe in an entirely different environment. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. Let's do... Okay, the water it is. (laughs) And I just like totally... Just like it goes over my head. (laughs) I I don't don't even... I just stand there. Oh, thanks, River. (laughs) I'm used to young sassy folk. I lived with uh, 10 teenagers. <laughs> and I, I quietly grumble to myself um, as I just calmly walk into the water. Okay. Are you moving with stealth? Um, yes. And I'm shit, actually going to approach from, I'm going to go back towards the dock and go yeah. around. <laughs> Same. <laughs> And then uh, just just walk into the water, and uh, and and start. Can 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 we kind of like stand on the bottom of the? Oh, I pick up a rock, and I hand it to Wilhelm. <laughs> what what am I doing with this rock? How deep is the how deep is the actual water that we're going up? The water here is surprisingly deep. Uh, it's at least ten feet deep at at the middle point. Yeah, and that in- that includes as we go up around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, it's quite deep. It's weak. Is this a magic rock? Yes, it will keep you on the surface of the water, the ocean's bottom. Um, it's science, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're going to hold rocks so that you Magics. can breathe underwater and just walk along on the bottom of the water. I love I'm it. I'm going to swim. Right. Okay. But, um, <laughs> Wait, can our familiars breathe underwater? Uh, yeah, I think he, he, cast, yeah. he cast it on the familiars. All right, cool. I don't know. I don't will, know Bruce, Bruce, will Bruce go under? <laughs> uh, Bruce will let you dismiss him into your robe. I just, I, uh, he, he. All right, and we, we holding I rocks. The I stick three of us, in my hood. The three of us trudge through the bottom of the river. Well, that is brilliant, and so you have totally avoided the Hydra. <laughs> oh. For now, we have to go back. He might be yeah. awake. Watch out when you uh, when you guys come back this way. Remember. Five five heads on you. Think about that when you leave the dungeon, incredibly wounded. Hmm? <laughs> I'll uh, forget this whole conversation. <laughs> well, with that, you walk along the water's bottom, taking the stream as it winds up into the underground passages below the cove and that is where we're going to take our break Ooh. Ooh. hydra battle avoided <laughs> <laughs> thanks river <laughs> and i mean river the river not river my sister <laughs> <laughs> great stuff well, with that, uh, I think we will uh, take our little break to refresh ourselves, take our short rest, and uh, keep going. And we will be back in 15 minutes uh, to uh, continue our wonderful adventure into the depths under Ashafen. In a bit. And we are back from our short rest. We have carved up, had lots of caffeine. You know, emptied ourselves as necessary, and we are ready to continue playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, if you're enjoying the stream and you want to help support our work, please make sure to check out our Patreon uh, and join us in Discord, where you have a special Discord exclusive to our patrons from Patreon. So join our Patreon, join us in Discord. Um, you can see, oh man, I'm all over the place right now. Uh, you can find out how by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And you can join us in Discord where we discuss all things role-playing games, especially D&D. &D. We also just talk about really all nerdy topics in the whole world there. And we have channels for D&D &D memes and behind-the-scenes discussions with Monty. And you can join us for our monthly writer's rooms where we discuss new episodes that Monty and I are working on. We just had our writer's room for the month and we talked all about Tasha's Cauldron of Everything and all the amazing stuff in that book and some of the upcoming episodes that we want to make for that book. And you can also join us in our monthly Q&As, which is all done through our Patreon. We film them and answer Patreon questions. So join us on Patreon, join us on Discord, and come hang out. First, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including Yes, 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 the Dusk Wardens, as well as Way Bigger Than Ducks. You can check it out at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. And in our game tonight, we use a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They have graciously given us permission to use these assets in our stream games, and you can use them on your games too. So please check them out. We encourage you to support these amazing creators. Roll 20 with the Virtual Tabletop, Battle Maps by Alex Vendara of Neutral Party and Ross McConnell of Two Minute Tabletop, Custom Maps created using Dungeon Fog and Wonder Draft, Player Character Artwork by Jeremy Cole, NPC Token Artwork by Matthias Bourbon, Monster Token Artwork by the, from the D&D 5e Monster Manual, and other source books, and Spell Effects Tokens by Gabriel Picard, with your music by Tabletop Audio. Guys, check it out. Please support these creators. Uh, you'll see some of it floating around the stream. Awesome. And with that, I think we will dive right back on in to the Shadows of Drakenheim. Are you all ready? Yes. All righty. Very well.
You walk along the bottom of the water. As it does so, the water flowing down takes on a sickly pallor. A slime covers through it. A sludge upon all the rocks and stones beneath the water, obscuring your vision with murky depths. It is not before long, though, as you proceed through the river, through the darkness and water, that the stone of the riverbed breaks for stone flagstones of elven make. What do you do? Admire the stonework. Proceed forward. Our, uh, our trek forward. It it seems the elven ruins uh, stretch far. Can I talk underwater with my water breathing? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll say you could. You, yeah. It appears that there was more than just an elven ruin tower here. It might be remnants of an elven city there's more than one building there's this we're, we're stumbling upon more elven ruins now and there's the tower there's multiple elven structures in these parts hmm. interesting might have, might have been a base of operation operations for them perhaps the water feels off to me perhaps more of those fish folk around it's gross mm. It's very yeah, with, with us breathing water, is it like kind of gross that it's getting all slimy? Yeah. Yeah. Tastes off. Is it like is it like breathing like 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 what like toxic air it's like, sort of? You know when the air is so humid, it feels like pea soup around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it's like. In fact, the water it isn't cold; it's warm, quite warm. Wrath. Wrath. <laughs> Why did you all look at me? I didn't do it. It might have been Bruce. Uh, I the water warm. Never mind. As the warmth uh, of the fine. water increases, you hear a thrum in the air. A throaty gurgling noise. A chorus of voices echoing through the water. Muffled, nonetheless, by the water. But there is a cacophony of sound coming through the caverns, and they shake slightly from the emanation. Some fish folk up ahead, maybe? Perhaps the townsfolk have come here. Mm, lured cautious. by something. Um, I'm going to, still holding my rock, I'm going to trudge up a little further. You trudging? Okay, let's adjust. As you hold your rock, this is the edge where the elven flagstones begin. The river curves, takes a U-turn right back down to the south here, however. But the elven flagstones open up um, quite wide here, forming a basin of flagstones. And in fact, this basin is formed by a series of steps that lead out of the water, forming a pool like so. As you look up, uh, uh, um, as you look up from the water, you can see that there is movement on the stones around you. Flapping, finned feet. Mm. So their feet are in the water? They're not in the water. The, with the murkiness of the water, it's very difficult to see the surface. But conversely, it would also be very difficult to see the water, underneath the water as well. Mm. Um, I'm going to... 
so okay the 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 steps go up to this sort of shallow pool and i can just make out some feet along the outside yes I, if, the the edges of the water b- b- descending up the steps so basically the area uh like the this is these squares basically are the steps going up okay. all around the edge yeah with mm-hmm. the the middle point yeah if if i were to surface where i am could I like? Am I? Is this is this area here like rocky cover a bit? Like, could I press myself up and just poke my head above yes, water to get a better view? It's risky, but possible. Yes. I I'm Wait, going. Okay. I want to put my hand on your shoulder to try to yes stay your <laughs> your emergence. Rath, I I want. To, uh, what are you suggesting? I, I'd like to see what's on the surface. What? How many we're dealing with? Get a number. Get a count. What, what what are your thoughts? And uh, thirty, approximately thirty feet back, I want to make uh, Bruce appear on the surface. Cool, he's the walking on the water. Yeah, <laughs> in, 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 and then uh, I'm gonna look through Bruce's eyes and start to approach this this pool. Okay, make a stealth oh, check see. for Bruce. That you were gonna make Bruce appear under the water. <laughs> He would not. He would just not appear. <laughs> he would just. He'd just be like, no. <laughs> uh, Sixteen. Okay. Here's what you see. There is a large octagonal chamber with several alcoves leading out of the pool here, and a small passage leading towards the east um, as an exit point. In this chamber, of similar construction to the ruins above, but total, but perhaps at one point flooded just as before the paintings and mosaics wash away by the tides revealing only the slightest tints of the elven architecture remaining in this chamber there are four strange looking fish folk they are much more deformed and thinner than the others and as you see them all of them are are clamoring over a pile of leather or clothing and as they breathe in they expand back outwards um as if something had crushed them and then they're opening back up and as you look through bruce's eyes scattered about on the floor here are the clothing and the skin of dozens of villagers some of which you recognize from the village and you can see, you watch as the f- one of the fish folk here is just pulling the human skin off of its body like it was just a skin suit. And it steps out of the skin suit, nods to one of the other fish folk, and waddles forward into the hallway. The other three fish folk here are carrying spears and shields, patrolling as if on watch. <laughs> I, um, wow, Rath, what what do you see? What what's it's happening a, on the surface? I have stumbled across their changing room. <laughs> what? I They're have ch- seen more than I can. These fish people, they are wearing the suits of. The villagers um that's Worthy. why they appeared so ghastly and gross they seem to have transformed completely just like those from Dransmond but they have tried to keep the ruse alive I do not understand you don't understand posing as a different creature to fool those around you I wouldn't use something like a suit it can break and tear I trust I have something more <laughs> this is much more efficient and- are, are, are the suits just like laying around on the ground or do they have some sort of system do they hang them up do yeah they-, they have little cubbies <laughs> <laughs> like little yeah, little spots yeah I have um, no, no. That's the worst idea I've ever come up with. We are not wearing those suits. We are not. I won't do it. 
Fair points. Echoing Fair points. through the chamber is a massive chorus of throaty voices uttering in an ancient and antediluvian language, crying out with, with throaty, fishy voices. <laughs> and it's echoing down the halls. Wrath, what are they saying? <laughs> I, I see. Uh, shall we keep sneaking, see if we can get further? At least we know this is an entrance if we need it, but I said we keep going along the river. I mean, they seem to be heading in the same direction as the river, so I say we push forward, continuing our underwater adventure. Um, yeah, disappearing um, Bruce once again. Uh, I'm going to continue on down with... Uh... I'm just making Houdini like in the water. Like, now nah, you're staying with me. <laughs> just holding him down. Okay, you're going to continue down this way. Yeah. Okay. The passage here becomes quite a lot more narrow. And as you continue down the thick ooze, the water is more like a thick ooze now. It is slick with slime and bits and drabs of delirium hang within it. In, in these moats of gelatinous goo. Uh, perhaps it's best to take on the three fish folk rather than push on through delirium jelly. Can we even breathe in this? Is this actually like water? Yeah, like our, how's water breathing going down here? Glad you asked. You could all make a constitution saving throw. Oh, cool, 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 cool. I'm, I'm glad we asked too. 20. 17. I breathe in, <laughs> and as luck would have it, I get a 17. Ooh. I use a luck point. I use a luck point. You all succeed your saving throws, but there is something foul in the water ahead, something contaminated that feels like it could change you. I say we take on the fish folk. I think we have a better chance with the fish folk. Uh, shall we try a Wilhelm surprise? Grab and stab? Grab and stab. Wrath, I don't know. We, you know, the grab and stab was created when Rudy and I used to take on, you know, a goblin here and there roaming around the woods or whatnot. But we need something more for you. What, what do you offer to the grab and stab? Grab, stab, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I can be the bait. The bait grab and stab. Bait grab and stab. Or Very well. Grab and stab surprise. Uh for the surprise portion. And I'm going to um disguise myself as a um as a gross looking villager. Um with droopy skin and, and okay. wearing uh I would like you to clothes. make an intelligence check. Oh no. <laughs> I got an 18. Okay. In a fishing village like this, everybody knows everybody. Unless you are impersonating a specific person that lives in the village, the chances of this working is zero. Rough. Because everybody in the village, if you want to, like, if you want to be a, like, if you want to impersonate an actual villager, that's mm -hmm. a different matter. But in small communities like this, where there's like fifty, a hundred people, everybody can recognize everybody, and so there's no. If you want to claim to be someone in the villager, in the village, you're going to need to get have an identity. Vasha, Vasha. Who? Vasha. Who's she, Vasha? She runs the tap house. No, but Vasha's been missing. Um, well, what about if... everybody in town is missing except Aubin. as far as, uh, Yeah. I was going to say if we transform into the one person who they haven't captured yet. But then why would he be all sullen looking and, and 
because the people who are here, off. the people who are here don't know <laughs> that it's okay. Okay. Listen, <laughs> if we, if, if he turns into somebody who is already here, uh-huh. that's going to be a problem. You think these three fish folk know everyone that's here. If they are the townsfolk, if they are in fact the townsfolk, then yes. As it's a small community. However, they've been trying to get what what was his name? Aubin. 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 Perhaps if everybody's here tonight, nobody's in town. He even Aubin. said everybody everybody left. So Aubin McGillan. Could, How did he be, get here though? How did he get here? He swam. He took a little the, the last boat. <laughs> He's um, the only logical choice. If we if we if we pick anybody else, they could catch on. If we pick anybody else, at least they know they're fish folk, though. Yeah, but I mean, just he stab could be the em. last. The just la- stab him. Yeah, so let's not try to make me more than all right. Be, I am. be Aubin, but we're ready to stab. All right, and I and I get can, my. Can my you lure them to em. the edge of the water? I'll, I'll just be. <laughs> Lure them to the edge of the water and we'll grab and stab. Um, I'm going <laughs> to. Yeah, I'm going to get up here, too. Okay. Lure them over with your. Rath, come on, be the bait. Come on, Rath. And Rath I leave are you guys going to try? Are you, are you guys going to try to surprise them or not? Or just go? For uh, it? Yeah, I think yeah. we should try to surprise. Them. Okay. All of you can make okay. me a stealth check. Oh, oh 19. This. 26. 23. All right. You guys got surprise. Um, let's get initiative real quick, but you guys are all going to get the surprise on them. Nice. On three. What? I rolled a three. You <laughs> <laughs> got 19. I got a 21. Three. Uh, so are we doing grab and stab, or since we're rolling initiative and we have surprise, I think we're just go one. Wilhelm, the, the it, it's on you. All right. Uh, is this still in the water, or do I have to pop out of the water to like come up here? Uh, yeah, you're still. That's still in the water. All that's right. just the edge of the flagstones. Oh. I'm I'm going to. And is it like a staircase up? Yes, towards the. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I creep over to this spot right here how far is that good and then i explode out of the water and yell wilhelm surprise (laughs) and i i stab this fish in the back all right make the attack uh you're not he doesn't see you so you have advantage on the attack roll i get uh 24 that's a hit yeah, I assumed as much. I'm going to sneak attack him. For 22 damage. He is very dead. What happens? Ooh. I So I I lurk right to the edge of the water and I'm like, just, just like I'm on the steps peering out. And then as soon as he turns his back just for a second, I jump out. I... I, I don't yell Wilhelm surprise. I whisper Wilhelm. I, I grab him and I go Wilhelm surprise. And I, I stab the rapier <laughs> through it. his back. In his ear. Wilhelm right. Surprise. Yeah, Wilhelm surprise. I, and I stab him and I drag him. I'm going to drag him into the water and hope that the others. Okay. Did uh, not. Rudy, see. it's your turn. What are you going to do? I mean, they're going to see something coming their way real quick. Um, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, I can make it to these guys. Okay, here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Different approaches. <laughs> Who did he comes in as well? Um, and it's advantage. Uh, they you did make your stealth check, so they didn't see you at the start. So I will get you grant you advantage on your first dun, attack. Dun, 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 dun. Um, twenty four to hit. It's a hit. Uh, nine damage. Uh, take another at uh twenty-two to hit. Uh, eight damage. That's a kill. Da, da, da. And then, 
I don't have any more movement, so I throw a hand axe <laughs> this guy in front of me. And that is, oh, uh, 15 to hit. A hit. And that's a D6. And that is eight damage. Oh, he's bloodied. Wrath, can you bring it on home? I, I, I throw my head back out of the water and my, my, the my mohawk. mohawk spraying sludge. And I, uh, it does a 14 hit. It does. And so does a 20. And I do, um, 23 damage. Blowing him away. The three sentries are destroyed. You see the sea of skin of the villagers, their flesh coats all hung up around this room in the niches and alcoves in a grisly scene. Whatever they have done, they have dispensed with who they once were. Are they flammable? So I know you said no, but what if we put on... <laughs> no. I ain't putting on nobody else's skin over top of my own. It's a masterful disguise. Well, um, I, I don't disagree but this seems to be the changing area. They are showing their true selves in the next room. If we were to walk in mm. there, it's ostensibly like not wearing your bathing suit in the bathing area. You will stand out quite obviously. <laughs> yeah. Well, it appears we're going to stand out either way then. So I, I suppose... agree with Rudy. We should destroy them all so that they will always be fish people no matter what. No more and fooling. They... You hear more of the chanting it's overpoweringly loud as you hear Wagga 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 Wham Really take a take the flag and lay 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 Did you guys make that out? I think I think they said something about a flagon. Um <laughs> well, we won't burn their skin yet because that will make a smell. So let's maybe try to stealth oh, up. Oh, oh what a this. gross smell. You know, Thanks for talking me out of wearing other people's skin. It's the more I'm thinking about it, the worse it sounds. And I just saw disguises. You quickly described it as a masterful disguise, even it, though we saw through it. Like, the moment, the, moment. We're like the, something's weird about these people. The, the chanting continues. <laughs> do either? Do any of you speak this? this language uh is it one language it doesn't sound like thieves can't or dwarvish or elvish or common <laughs> it's not any of those is it? are you asking me wilhelm no i i've never spoken this fish language before in my life uh. We All right. can grant me the ability to understand many different languages, but I do not believe we have time. We must move quickly. I, I'm going to creep forward. I'm creeping, but you can tell like I want to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm ready to fight some fish folk. Wilhelm, give me a stealth check. That's going to be a 26. Okay, Wilhelm, you spring forward into a truly massive chamber. I will reveal now what you see. This chamber glows with octarine light that glitters around like the inside of a glittering reef. Motes of light hang across the air, and a massive pool of slimy water is illuminated with greenish purple yellowish octarine this chamber is gigantic almost a hundred feet wide uh, cavernous in nature half of it is occupied by an underground lake the other half stony shores wherein are gathered dozens of fish folk all laying prostate worshipfling towards a circular altar surrounded by three pillars at the center of the room upon which uh, uh, in, in a, a central island by best count perhaps maybe 30 to 50 fish of these fish folk are in this chamber at the center of the altar are three disheveled mockeries of mermaids 
they have blue seaweedy hair and uh, slimy green skin. And around the three of them in this central altar, they have a shard of delirium and several vials of poultice and two folk who are naked in uh, but a regular humanoid demeanor, human demeanor one man one woman and the two of them are holding the shard of delirium over their heads and rubbing them with this this slimy poultice that they are making from the waters before them something writhes in the waters in front of them something awful something that is not meant to be the chanting of the fish folk create the massive chorus that echoes through the entirety of this chamber and i will just reveal the whole thing for you now that i have described it All right. Remember our mission, friends. We're here to kill the Duchess. What's what's kill, what's the approach? Kill the Duchess, but there's some innocent folks in here. We gotta save. Are you, Wilhelm? This is from where you are. You can see that the room actually there are several what looks like several sets of elven ruins that continue up and around this central cavernous chamber. Hmm. My friends, I could perhaps uh, sneak through those chambers. I, I think I see another entrance into the room if I continue through that chamber. Perhaps we attack from two sides. Uh, Rudy, do you, think, do you think it's possible to get to that pedestal and, and save those two humans before these fish folk finish whatever it is they're doing i think we gotta act now if we're gonna do it i'm gonna go around where do you two think you're gonna go um come here wilhelm what and Math. i'm gonna cast with the rest of my spell storing ring uh, a fourth level invisibility so that would affect all three of you then. Correct. So I, I deep dig deep into the magic that is in the, the ring of the Academy and we all vanish from existence. I will go try to save those two. I, I say we both get in there and kick some mermaid butt. <laughs> The magic right. will only last until you pounce. Wrath, can you be on the duty of making sure that swarm of fish folk don't disturb Rudy and I as we try to rescue? I, I know that it might be hard to keep off all of them, but can you be on, on duty of trying to control the swarm of fish folk well, Rudy and I sneak our way to the center and try to save those hostages. Move quickly. All right. Um, I'm going to be very daring, and I'm going to, to creep very <laughs> quietly and carefully, but I'm going to do like I am moving through the swarm of fish folk invisibly. As they're as they're like bowing and chanting, you're you're just like I'm boom, like tiptoeing. Tip okay, <laughs> Wilhelm. Yeah. As you get close to the fish folk about here, one the fish folk over here. So you stop about here. Okay, the fish folk over here. It's you make a stealth check. Twenty-five. You are perfectly quiet, but it's as if somehow the magical invisibility that you are using is pulling on an otherworldly sense of these fish folk. 
You feel it as if you get about 20 feet of them. It's like they can't see you. But it, it's, it's like it sniffs for a moment. And it, and it goes... Rrr. It stops the chanting for a moment. And it stands up. And begins walking towards you. I send... How tall is the cavern? Uh, the, ta- the cavern reaches a height of 40 feet. You know what? I'm going to send Houdini in as a distraction. Okay. Above, above them to try to draw their attention to the sides and the back. All right. Um, as Houdini flutters into the room, um, the, the, the fish folk that stopped the chanting sees him and begins chasing after him. And these three fish folk take out their javelins and begin th- throwing them at Houdini. The sacrifice. Uh, <laughs> and so good it, it, it takes them a moment, but they do hit and take out Houdini. <laughs> and as they, as the body of Houdini goes poof, um, the three of them, uh, Wilhelm, uh, just wait. Tell me before you okay. move your token, okay? Yeah, yeah. Because it, okay. ma- it really matters. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, with, with you know what, it, it might be better. Let's roll for initiative now, uh, okay. and that way uh, we can actually contain contain your movements. This is the second one today on initiative. I just I just rolled a twenty, so I'm going with a twenty-seven. Three, I, uh, nine. I don't know how I feel about this die today. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about the choices I'm going to make for Wilhelm right now, but so Rudy, you got a three. Yep. Okay. So Wilhelm, you are first to act now. As soon as the fish folk seem distracted by um, Houdini, I'm going to try to move forward to the edge of the water making my way towards okay. the pedestal hopefully invisibly as you get here something pings this fish hook stops and it says something in this gurgling language to the others and it gestures them over and these four begin moving in this direction they they they, they stop they notice you so they're 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 turning the move they haven't moved from their square because it's not their turn yet but they have noticed They've noticed that you're moving. Do you mm. continue? I'm going to stop moving. Do they seem to stop looking for me when I stop moving, or are they still staring right at me? Uh, they are staring. They are, they are looking at your space, but not staring right at you. Yeah. But they can't, as soon as you stop moving, they kind of... I mean, I can't even hand signal to my colleagues anymore. I don't know what to make of this. Um, I'm going to just sink into the rocks nearby, and can I put my hood up and try to hide? Yeah. Should I roll to roll to hide? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Wrath, what would you like to do? I'm gonna go around. Where's your so, token, Wrath? Um, oh, Bruce is on top of me. Oh, but oh. Bruce is um, I, I he's still dismissed, so to speak. Okay, but I'm gonna try to go around. So I'm gonna go up here into this room and try to see if there's another way in. Yeah, you can see that there's another passage here. I'm going to start making my way towards it. Creeping along. Okay. And um, can I... It says I lose invisibility if I cast a spell or Or attack. Attack, but would be bringing Bruce back into existence. Would that count as a... No, I'll say no. uh, I'll say you can't. So 
I'm going to, Bruce is going to form beside me and uh, we, we're going to start making our way towards this uh, other passage. All right. The three women on the altar continue their ritual as the rest of the group chants. Rudy, what will you do? Um, I'm like, we got to get these folks out of here. Um, so as I move forward and I dash, um, if I go past these folk, are they going to get opportunity attacks? Uh, if they can they see you, but they okay. don't seem to be able to see you. Okay. No. Okay. So I am, I'm here and I'm going to dash and I'm going to make it. Let's see. Um, I want to make it to the edge and I want to do a long jump onto um, this. Is this a pillar? <laughs> yes, it goes straight up to the ceiling. Okay. I want to grab onto it. Okay. And like <laughs> essentially boot it and then just like <laughs> around the pillar as much as I can. I'm going to do my best. Um, so I okay. just, I go, I go for it. <laughs> yeah, go for it then. <laughs> okay. Do I need to roll anything to like stay on to this thing? Uh, make an athletics check. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh <laughs> crit giving me a 28 nice okay so i'll say that with with your total movement you are able to basically launch yourself onto the platform <laughs> sweet <laughs> um, awesome but there's a stirring in the crowd of the fish folk as you move through and several of them stop their chanting um as this anything else rudy No. I'm okay. still invisible, right? Yep, you are. Sweet. Um, as there's a stirring and the fish folk grab their spears and several of them stand up and there is a general s sense of stunned silence amongst the crowd. And all of them begin to gaggle and were oh waga 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 fluly 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 and several of them um begin to gather their weapons and move t towards this area um and this one here it starts pointing in your direction rudy uh and several more of them grab their weapons uh well a good chunk of them continue chanting as they move forward um in in response to all all this movement these ones move right up to where wilhelm is and they take their spears and they start stabbing the air where you are Wil wilhelm they can't see you because you're invisible so but they are stabbing where where your space is now now does that take into account that i tried to slink off and hide or did yes, it, seem yes, it does. Okay. Yeah. Um, and one and well, two of them stab the air around them. They stab, and one of them actually catches you. Uh, and you take uh three points of piercing damage from, from the blade. Um, but man, but fortunately you're not the one concentrating on the invisibility. I will take I will half that and take <laughs> one damage. Imagine they just like scrape you right on the face. Yeah, yeah, it like cuts my face. Um, the the fish folk here seem down here. They seem hesitant to approach the altar, but they're saying something in their chortling language to the three women upon the altar. Um, uh, and with that, we will go to the top of the round with Wilhelm. I I'm not having any of this, and I I I've sensed like I feel like I could hear Rudy rush past me and then see all the fish folk look and point at the altar. So I just, I kind of like, as these guys are poking and prodding in my space, I'm like, damn it. And I'm going to bonus action dash away from these fish folk and try to do what Rudy did. I'm going to try to jump and what I want to try to do is because I'm more acrobatic than dexterous or more acrobatic than athletic, I'm going to like try to jump and kind of like 
kick off of this so that I like do a running jump kick off and I should be able to land right on the edge there. Alrighty. Uh, give me an acrobatics check. I get a 19. Yeah, you kick off the pillar and land on, on the altar itself. Um, and again, with more response from the from the assembled crowd. Um, and anything, you still have your action remaining. Yes. Um, I'm going to, that's as far as I can move. So I'm going to pull out my crossbow and I'm going to fire it at uh, this sort of mermaid creature here. Okay. Um, because I'm invisible, this, this I don't... will make you invisible, but you do have advantage on the attack. Yes. Twenty-one. That is a hit. All right. For a second, I was like, "Where's Houdini?" Oh yeah. <laughs> Wait. I'm going to sneak attack. Dead. Dead. <laughs> Uh, I get a 15. Uh, to hit? No. Um, so, uh, no, I got 21 to hit and 15 damage. Awesome. The strike strap... As it, the blow strikes the woman, she shrieks, and as she does so, she grasps at the rest of her body and bits of what, whatever humanoid skin were left on her, she pulls them off, revealing her horrific form underneath. This awful mix of amphibian fish and human with scraggling seaweed-like hair and thin skin stretched across flexible bones. She eyes you with with eyes that glow with an octarine light and begins cackling with this chortling laugh. Yeah! And, and begins to speak in her haltingly strange language. I I just yell back. Ah! And and then I I, I kind of look around me and I go, Rudy. I don't know if you're here, but I really hope you are because we're in the thick of it now. Alrighty, Wrath. It is your turn. <laughs> I'm still sneaking. <laughs> you can hear this. You can hear this. I was trying to get in position. Ah. Uh <laughs> I don't know where anybody else is, so I just heard Rudy run past, and then everybody started looking there, so I'm like, I'm gonna go too. Sorry, uh, man. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, oh, God. Um, you can do it. How far do you have to go? This pathway, um, is it pretty, uh, is it look like I can make it through? Yeah. To the other yep. room. Yep. Oh man. Um. I I have to. Uh, I have to come back this way. All right. And uh. Oh boy. I'm gonna throw some uh. Jeez. Um, uh, you know we're gonna fill the we're gonna fill the room. So let's throw. I, I, Bruce's mind starts to uh, starts to wander into planes unknown, and uh, giant tentacles start to appear in, in the in the middle of this area. I want to try to cast a bard's right, like oh boy, right in the middle of. Uh, the first ones that were disrupted. Uh, with, okay, Ivar's Black Tentacles? Yeah, like right in... Um, I don't know where my... Uh, Are you thinking like over here or over here? Like, like okay. basically I want to try to get like 
as many of these as I can in that open space. If ours is a 20 foot cube, correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there 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 you go. So that'll get all four of those right there. Oh man, that's it. Um Oh, oh, it's so dwarfed by the size of this cave. <laughs> uh yeah that's uh and then um i guess i can do it like 150 feet so yeah you can I, you got you got quite a range on it so if you want to create it further back can i get them can i get it right on the uh can i put it right on the the altar um just to the just to the right of the person uh you could get it there. You could get it there. I want it like right, yeah, like uh, yeah. one one square up, um, just to try to block the altar path. All yes. right, that'll get uh, the first, uh, the first of the the three beautiful uh, witches in that as well. Okay, uh, so I believe they need to save at the start of their turn. Correct. Um. Yeah, it enters the space or starts its turn there. Okay, great. Anything else, Raph? Nope, that's it. Okay. Uh, but that also means that the um, that that Rudy's invisibility disappears. <laughs> yes. It was gonna in a second anyways. Okay. Sorry, Rudy. So next up are the witches. Um, right. With Rudy appearing before them, um, the first one gets a 12 on her saving throw against Ivard's black tentacles. Oh, um, so she's restrained. All right. She is restrained. The other two though are not. Um, and seeing, uh, Wilhelm and Rudy like this, the, this witch right here, she cackles. And as she does, so arcs of octarine lightning envelop across her fingers. She steps over here and she's going to fire. A lightning bolt straight that way. So oh, Rudy no. and Wilhelm can both make dexterity saving throws. I got an 18. You have I, evasion now, don't you, Wilhelm? I have evasion now. You take no damage. I'd roll out of the way. Uh, Rudy absorbs all the lightning. <laughs> I step in front of you and I get it. Oh, yeah, I don't even roll out of the way. You just, you just take, and I, I like, ah! Uh, Rudy, that's going to be 30 points of electrical damage. Oh my goodness. Oh. Sorry. 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 And the other, um, the other witch sees, uh, the, the two of you and she cackles with rage. And as she does so, her, her, um, her eyes begin to glow with a dread light as she casts eye bite. Um, and the, the, the Octarine becomes a void power and she looks directly at Wilhelm. Uh -uh. Um, and Wilhelm, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh no. Oh man. I got a 20. All right. You are not put to sleep. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's good. I appreciate that. Thank you, Dice. Thank you. Okay. Um, and the last, uh, of the, uh, three, uh, witches, um, it, she is in the area of the Ivard's black tentacles. Uh, so she herself is going to cast Misty Step. Darn it. Uh, Bamf. Uh, and then she will just cast a cantrip, uh, targeting, uh, Wilhelm. Uh, so she will just cast Chill Touch at Wilhelm, uh, but she only gets a 15 to hit. No, I dodged the evil spell by hiding right. behind Rudy. <laughs> All right, that's the witches, and it's Rudy's turn. All right, uh, Rudy turns to the witch in front of her a bit smoky after taking a lightning bolt and saying, you know, the thing about... Fish folk and just just to, just to reiterate though, I, I do still take damage from the Avar's black tentacle, so I do need you to roll that wrath. Oh, uh, twelve damage. Okay, it was uh, a big old twelve. 
You know what I love about witches that are fish folk? You're extra squishy. And I go at her. <laughs> All righty. All right. Woo. Um, 27 to hit. It's a hit. With eight damage. Another. Oh, yes. Uh, 23 to hit. Also a hit. For nine damage. And another. Oh, man. Uh, 25 to hit. For, oh, yes. 13 damage. Max damage. Uh, she is bloodied by the barrage of attacks. <laughs> and she <laughs> screeches. Ah! Very good. Um, is that a curse? She's mad. That... Sound, sounds she, like it might be. Bad. Uh, and now it is the fish folk's turn. Uh, these three fish folk, these fish folk here see wrath and swarm him. Ah! Uh, yep. All around. So, Wrath, you're going to get attacked four times by fishes. Uh, I get a uh, 12, a 16, a 15, and a 12. Two hits. Two hits. Two successes. For a total of eight damage. And? Uh, these here fish folk go. here, uh, I have four fish folk in the area of your spell. Uh and they're going to have to make saving throws or die. Mm -hmm. uh, but do they take half damage on a failed saving throw? Uh, no, they okay. take... I, I don't think they take anything. Okay, so one of them does get devoured by Bruce's tentacles, uh, mm -hmm. but the other two are, are not stuck or restrained, uh, and they are going to just move forward as quickly as they can to help defend. It does uh, count as difficult terrain for if that helps. Yeah, it, it's going to cost them probably... all their movement to get on the other side, so they, they have to dash through. Um, this fish is just going to swim. Uh, so he can just swim right over to Wilhelm. This fish is going to swim over to Wilhelm. This oh. fish is going to swim over to Wilhelm. This fish is going to swim over to Wilhelm. This fish is going to swim over to Wilhelm. Right. This fish is going to swim over to Rudy. These fish are all going to start swimming. Wrath, I said you were on duty to stop the swarm. <laughs> I. This is exactly how it was going to go down. <laughs> Rudy? <laughs> I mean, you guys jumped into a giant pillar in the middle of 50 fish folk. I, uh. I. I. I missed this lesson in school. I skipped this one. How to deal with 50 fish folk uh, chanting incantations. Yeah, so as many of them as I can get, these ones all have to dash. So. Yeah, so they basically all pile in onto the altar to defend their witchy masters. Uh, all crying out at the top of their lungs, Fatagan, Fatagan, Patule, Fatagan! Uh, and so I think I'm going to get five attacking Wilhelm and three attacking Rudy. So the three on Rudy. Uh, I get a 22, a 12, and a natural one. I'll take the one hit. And against Wilhelm, I get a 16, uh, a 19, an 18. And a 10 and an 18. Four hits. Thank Four you. hits. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, oh, that's going to be a grand total of 18 damage across the three hits. What about mine? I got one. Uh, for Rudy, six damage. Uh, 18. If I half one of them, what, what does that bring me to? Uh, you can half one of them, and that'll take it down by six damage. All right. Okay. Uh, Rudy, it is your turn. Uh, sorry, that's the fish folk. So we go back up to the top with Wilhelm. Wilhelm, you are surrounded by a school of fish. 
Yeah. So in retrospect, when I saw the black tentacles appeared, I was like, aha, barricade. And then they all <laughs> jumped into the water and swam over. And I was like, right, fish. Um, Wilhelm is not like, I don't know. I feel like I'm, I'm being swarmed. Absolutely. And I'm not in a good position. I'm going to stab at the one in front of me here. I feel like I'm back to back with Rudy surrounded. I'm Basically, stab- yes. You, the, yeah. the two of you are on the edge of this altar being surrounded by horrible mutant fish people um, as they swarm and swim around you, chant, still chanting the horrible thrumming pulse as the eldritch light of delirium covers over this chamber. This is an awful place to die. Good luck. Um, uh, I'm going to stab at it with my, with my rapier. Um, uh, getting... Uh, a 24 to hit. It's a hit. Uh, and I'm going to sneak attack it. No, because no, nobody, nobody else. No, I do have. No, I uh, can't. No, there's no one to sneak attack. But fortunately, the attack uh, rolled the damage. And let's see. Oh, good. Max damage. Uh, that's going to be 12 damage. You cut it down. Um, With this brief moment uh, so f- actually, as as it falls, I see this hag over here staring at me, mm-hmm. and I'm going to uh, take a shot at her. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I dive into the water, and I'm going to dash. I'm going to bonus action dash to get back to the shore. It'll provoke a bunch of attacks. Are you okay with that? Uh, or does your fancy footwork protect you from some of those? Uh, it only protects me from people I think I made an attack against. Okay, so I'm going to get to make a bunch of attacks against you. Six in total. Uh, I get a five and a two, <laughs> so those aren't going to those are going to be nine, ten. I get a three and a six. I get wow, the dice like you. I get five misses and one crit. Okay, That's for ten <laughs> points of damage. <laughs> you really got out of there. Uh, it got way too dicey for me. Although they're just going to follow me, but at least I can lure some of them away from Rudy. Alrighty. Wilhelm, anything else? Uh, that was my action, bonus action, move. I think I think that's it. Alrighty. Wrath, it is your turn. Okay. Um, seeing all this happening... Um, I'm going to uh, turn on my radiant consumption. So light bursts from my body and everything that uh, for 10 feet and more dim light for 20. And I'm going to scream into the void, calling upon the power of my ancestors. And um, everything that is ending my turn within 10 feet, including myself, takes four radiant damage. Um, And I'm going to stand there and just like burn with hot, fiery sun. Does that deal damage to all of them right now? Um, At the end of my turn. At the end of your turn. Um, Okay. And And, And that's an action to activate that power? Correct. Okay. With anything else you want to do with your turn? No, he's just going to turn it on. And the four, they are destroyed by the radiant energy. And uh, and and for all intents and purposes, Bruce is going to scatter. He knows to stay more than 10 feet away. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm going to look to my friends for next turn. I will be running after some fish folk. Okay, the hags. Uh, They are all going to cast Misty Step. Uh, And then uh, this one here, uh, she will Misty Step over here. Shoot a Chill Touch at Wilhelm. uh, Getting a 12 to hit. Ah, I dodge it again. I see it coming. And then she's going to move over here. And then these two uh, will fire their Chill Touches at Rudy. Getting a natural one. And a, a, a 17 to hit. Nope. Okay, and then they will both spend their movements 
to move back <laughs> over here. Rudy, you got this. I think I got this. Rudy, it is your turn. <laughs> okay. Um, seeing that I'm surrounded by a lot of fish folk, um, I'm going to do it. Okay. I take my elemental gem and I smash it on the ground oh! and summon a fire <laughs> elemental. Um, Game changer. <laughs> what? Yeah. I totally uh, forgot about that. Oh, <laughs> uh, I feel so relieved at the sight of the smash gem. And then you see, like, as the fire elemental comes in, you see it light in my eyes, and I say, burn these squishy folk. <laughs> and that's, uh, I don't know, does it go on my turn? Uh, I I'm going to say for the sake of simplicity, it goes on your turn. Now, okay. a fire elemental uh, is a very unique creature because it can act, it, uh, it is capable of uh, moving through other creatures' spaces. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and setting them on fire. <laughs> and and setting them on fire when, when it does so. So um so let's see how this is gonna play out. Um, and then it also gets to hit people. <laughs> and <laughs> fire damage. Uh okay. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, it can move through a space. It, it, um yeah. Um so the first time it enters a creature's space on a turn, that creature immediately takes uh, 1d10 fire damage and catches fire. So when you throw... Where where do you throw it down? Is that where you want to throw it, or do you want to throw it down? As long as it's not in the water. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't does wanna... it just start swirling around? <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Let me... I can't really... You know what? They're fine. It can move after. Okay. Um, because it does take some damage if it's in water. Yeah, so. but those three fish folk immediately burn. So roll a d10. <laughs> uh, seven. Okay, they all burn to death, uh, and the smell of cooked fish fills the air. Uh, and I'm going to go on this thing, and I can... Um, and then it gets a touch, a multi-attack touch. Yep. Uh, so it can move like a uh, thing to remember with fireman elementals is it can move over people set them on fire and then attack and yeah. you just throwing it down that was it just appearing and burning away the people that are are there so and it has 50 feet of movement correct so if i move it through 50 feet of people is it just gonna set them all on fire <laughs> uh yeah um i you should be able to control that elemental now you should be able to click it there we go. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, it has fifty feet of movement. So how do you want it to move? It's it it it's its turn. Um. Yeah, I think I want it to cut. I don't want it to burn the people, but I would love for it to just like continue to swirl around like the pedestal. Um. So what is this? It can was I? Uh, can I dismiss Five, um Evards? Yes, that's fine. Yeah, just trying to see. I, bigger creatures, it's harder to tell what their movement. So it's here, the best fun. way is to just grab the. Uh, uh, if you press Q as you bring it around, and that'll bring the ruler out. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't like that. Okay, well, I'll I'll kind of help you here. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about like yeah, hitting a bunch of these <laughs> folk over here. It's a fire um, shield. But again, avoiding the uh, the two people in the middle as it, much as possible. It would basically be able to sweep all down around through these ones and end okay. its turn there. Okay. And then is there still others around it where it can punch them in the face? Yes, but these fish folk all do get to make opportunity attacks as it moves over them. But uh, I'm just going to roll and see if it does. Um it does take some hits, but it is resistant to the damage. So I'll just track it. It ends up taking uh, a total of 12 points of damage after its resistance applies. Roll the D D10 to see how those ones get damaged as it burns them up. Eight. Uh, yeah, those, those fish folk are all burned to a crisp by the fire elemental's body. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Rudy just kind of like 
throws it down is like, can you just take care of all these uh, these folk, make some fine fillets? And then she, um, as my as my bonus action, I'm gonna um, second wind. Okay. Just to get a bit of hit points uh, back. Yeah, and you can still make two attacks for the fire elemental. Seven. I gained seventeen. I rolled max on that one um, to heal. So I'm like, <laughs> ah, love the smell of you know cooking fish in the morning or evening. Wow. What time of day is it? I don't know. Uh, and then it takes. Um, to hit let me just spring it up it is uh plus six to hit so um 14 to uh, hit yep yeah. and it does 2d6 plus three so eight plus so 11 fire damage amazing amazing and then it gets a uh, um, it gets a second. Is it around anything? I guess it's not around. It, anything no, else. just the two prisoners. Okay. Yep. It doesn't hurt them. <laughs> okay. Uh, what an amazing turn, Rudy. <laughs> uh, what a power move! <laughs> I'm in point. awe. <laughs> we uh, yeah. I'm in awe. Wrath and Wilhelm are standing on just like what? <laughs> I I yeah yeah. Uh, the fish folks <laughs> speechless. Uh, seeing <laughs> half of their number just get burned horrifically to a crisp by this horrific fire elemental, the uh, I uh, several of the fish folk back off uh, to protect uh, the um, their the witches. Um, so they they come back to encircle the the witches and withdraw themselves uh, from from the fight. Um, but these ones decide to go for rate right for Wilhelm. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I'm standing there in awe and I forget to realize that there's more fish folk and they come and swarm me again. Uh, and these three are going to have their nerve and they're going to go right after Rudy. Uh, this one will go after Rudy too. Hooray. Uh, so bunch of attacks on Wilhelm. Uh, that's a 12, a 14, a seven, a 15, a uh, seven and a natural. That is none. <laughs> Wilhelm. Wilhelm, you see the best fencing you've ever seen. They like come in with their spears and he has one hand behind his back and it's just like he's he's encouraged by this fire elemental. Bravery courses wow. through his veins and he he flings their weapons aside. Rudy against Down you. I got a 17 a 12, a 20, and a 23. You know what? I'm going to use shield on the two that hit. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually, you know what? Dragon, I have turning point. One I of them does still hit. Okay. One of the, so 18 plus five is, it's is 23. Si it's so. six damage. I was going to be like, I was like, you know what? I, a, a moment ago, I was like, all right, I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Now I'm like, okay, I can still do this. You can still do this, Monty. Come on. You can, you got this. And then the dice are like, uh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe oh not. My God. Uh, Wilhelm, it is your turn. Um, so I'm, f I'm fencing now with six fish folk at once. And I take a jab at uh, the one right here in front of me, or I say in front of me, to the right, to the east. And so in perfect fencing stance, I stab at him, getting a 19. It's a hit. I have no way of getting my sneak attack, but it's still going to be six damage. It is a slain fishling. And then I uh, pull out my crossbow and fire at the next one. Getting a 12 to hit? Uh, that is actually a miss. Ah, a little too close range for my crossbow. They, they knock it yeah. on a side. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm going to... I'm coming, Wilhelm. All right, Wrath, it is your turn. I dash over to Wilhelm and I go, I'm sorry, this might burn a little. And everyone takes 10 points of, or four points of radiant damage. I'm going <laughs> to half that. 
because I, I haven't I haven't used my reaction to half anything. I'm so, it's like burning light, and you can feel like like this energy and uh, emanating uh, out of me. I but I know you're helping, but I'm a little like I'm like ah, oh, yeah. but I only take two damage. <laughs> all right, same. That's I take all, two as well. That's all from you, Wrath. Yeah, and everything within ten feet. Does it kill the ones on the other side of? Oh Rome? yeah, it would. Yep. Woo! Oh, man. As my eyes adjust to the light, oh, I look around brutal. and see that they're all. It's dead, really but... bright. It's yeah. really bright. Okay. Wrath, let's go. Let's go help Rudy. Let's go <laughs> save Rudy. And I look um, over at Rudy I, and like I think she's she's, she's fine. She's fine. She's always fine. <laughs> Just try to carry yourself, big guy. I, my hands burn you as I put my hand on your shoulder. <laughs> It's burns. It burns real bad. And Man, and the mood changed. Yeah, like get the witches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, one of the witches is still got her eye bite up and running, and Rudy's just in range, so she's gonna try to eye bite you, Rudy. Make a uh, wisdom saving throw. Oh. <laughs> Fourteen. That's a successful save. Oh my god! <laughs> you are not. Yeah, yeah. You are not. Uh, you are not. Knocked unconscious. Power uh, play Rudy. By that. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, great. Uh, the other two witches. What are they going to do? What have they got here? Um, one of them. Uh, they. She is going to. Kind of range she got there. Okay, great. She will move forward to here uh and seeing the two of you over there um she is going to cast she's going to try to cast hold person with a higher level spell slot on on both of you uh, uh no! you know what she's going to go for the fourth level slot actually and she'll move up so that you're all in range uh all of you can make a wisdom saving throw against hold person oh, oh no no. With my final luck point, I push three. Oh, baby! I got a fifteen. That's a save, Wilhelm. Wrath. Oh. Twenty-three. That's a save, Rudy. One. You are paralyzed. <laughs> oh, I went from what? a three Rudy! to a fifteen. Now we need to save Rudy. Uh, and the. Uh, the last hag is going to come up. Uh, uh, she's just going to dash up this way herself. Okay. Uh, Rudy, it is your turn. You are paralyzed, but you get a wisdom saving throw to escape this. 12. That's enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. She's okay. back. She's so back. That's, the, that's my action, right? Uh, that That is your turn. Yep. Yeah, you get oh, the wizard. That's my turn. Like, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And then the elemental still gets to go. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay. Um. So it's gonna it's gonna travel around here and burn all these burn all these fish. Alrighty. And just uh, circling. They are burned to a. They do get the op opportunity attacks against it. Uh, it does take three hits for a total of uh twelve damage, which becomes six damage. It is strong. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, sorry. No. What was that? I got it. Okay, you got it. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that was your, your turn. Uh, the then, fish folk. So, Does it, in terms you... of movement, I think I just want to check how far it can get. So it came. Well, that was here. 20 feet, so it could go another 30. Yeah, I can make it. Yeah. <laughs> um. So 30 feet would be here. Here? Here? From there? Yep. Okay. And then it gets two fist punches on the, you know, the fish. Um, fist oh, punch. Man. So it's uh, 18 to hit. Nice. It's a hit. And that's 2d6. Eight damage. That's a kill. And then it gets the other one. Oh yeah, seventeen plus six, so twenty-three to hit the other one. 
And that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven damage. All right. I think okay. I killed a fish. I think <laughs> I killed one fish. Oh man! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, the right. fire damage it, the fire damage is just uh, it's uncontrollable <laughs> alright the fish folk the two common folk who are naked and, and bound here grab some of the spears uh, and start stabbing you Rudy fun cool thanks uh, um, <laughs> y'all were saving you <laughs> screaming with madness in their eyes um, uh, it seems that they were willing participants in this ritual no. Um, oh. And they uh, go right for you. Um, and one of them gets a 15. Uh, the other gets an 18 to hit with one of the spearheads that it stabs you with. Shield. All righty. Rudy, this is what happens when you try to help people. I hope I just you help anyone anymore. Are you, are you yelling that over to her? I smacked I'm you. Saying that in her mind. I'm it no, is I'm indeed. <laughs> <laughs> this is the end of the, um, as the other fish folk come to assault the fire elemental here and a few others swim forward to push the attack on Rudy. They're just going to dash right up to help. Um, they, these three make a few attacks to get through. Uh, actually all three of them hit dealing. They hit 23. I still have my shield. Uh, no on the elemental. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they deal 10 damage to the elemental. Um, and as the that brings us to the end of the combat round. And we are past our time, folks. So oh, we'll we we'll need to pause on a cliffhanger there. What a turnaround. Uh, really turn around. Oh, my. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. That was amazing. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. I was frantically <laughs> searching, like, what What do I have? My only shot, I had nothing. I was like, I'll just burn everything with radiant damage and just run around the map. <laughs> Didn't need to. Unreal. I, I totally forgot about that thing. I, so I, I honestly thought, like, you guys went in there. I was like, all right, well, they're dead. Uh <laughs> I thought I was going to die. I was, like, starting to think of how Wilhelm was going to die here. Rather than walking out place. the door. He's like, nah, well, I'll just find new recruits. I'll be honest, I never think I'm going to die unless I'm out of all my healing stuff. And I'm like, nah, we, still, we can still do this. Oh, uh, no. As soon as we were surrounded and I was, like, looking at how much, how many attacks i can output versus how many attacks i was about to get hit with yeah. and i was like no it doesn't add up i'm gonna die here i'm gonna die but man <laughs> fire elementals Amazing. fire elementals wow <laughs> saving the day that was fun oh man Rudy, uh unreal Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. <laughs> well a big thank you to the our three players for surviving tonight uh with uh, foolhardy bravery and unexpected good luck and <laughs> in ingenuity. Uh, Jill, MVP, Wrath, uh, Jill, Jill as Rudy, Wrath played by Joe, and Wilhelm played by Kelly. Big thank you to the three of you. And a huge thank you to Kyle for all of his hard work behind the scenes and hanging out in chat tonight. We miss your thumb. We miss your you, thumbs Kyle. up. We miss your thumbs up. So very, very much. Um, and a special thank you to our dungeon master, Monty Martin, for Yay! running this Lovecraftian horror death trap and making me feel like I need to roll a new character every week. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Keeping you on your toes. Keeping me on my toes with my squishy, squishy rogue. Thank you, Monty, for running such an incredible game tonight. Yes, thank you, Monty. Uh, thank you, Kelly. And yes, absolutely, MVP Jill. Um, in our game tonight, we use a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They have graciously given us their permission to use it in our streamed games, but you can use it at your table as well. We encourage you to check out and support these amazing creators. We roll 20 with our virtual tabletops. You can watch all the madness. Battle maps by Alex Vendar of Neutral Party and Ross McConnell of Two Minute Tabletop. Custom maps created using Dungeon Fog and Wonder Draft. Player character artwork by Jeremy Cole. NPC token artwork by Matthias Bourbon. Monster token artwork from the D&D 5e Monster Manual and other source books. Spell effects tokens by Gabriel Picard. And music by Tabletop Audio. So thank you all for contributing.
And of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts, including Yes, 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 uh, the uh, new ones from Shadows of Drakenheim, like uh, Way Bigger Than Ducks and the Dusk Wardens. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible thanks to the incredible generosity of our Patreon community. If you enjoy our work, please consider checking us out by on Patreon. Uh, you can find it by following the links in the description below. Uh, we also have a phenomenal Discord community, which is exclusive for our patrons, where you can come hang out with us, chat about what's going on in Drakenheim, chat with Monty about behind-the-scenes stuff, and take part in our monthly writer's room, helping us come up with new episode ideas, and our monthly Q&As, where we answer the Patreon-specific questions. Which will be this Thursday. Which will be this Thursday. So if you're joining our Patreon now, get in and get your questions yeah, submitted. Yeah, we're going to do our too. dungeon design workshop on Thursday. Nice. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, Kelly and I also post new videos on Thursdays on YouTube. So check that out at youtube.com slash dungeon dudes. And uh, be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. There is a special note about next Tuesday, though, and I'll let Monty take it away from yeah. there. Next uh, Tuesday will be our last session of Shadows of Drakenheim for 2020. So that will be uh, on, uh, uh, as of that, we will be on our hiatus uh, for a few weeks as we uh, enjoy uh, our lockdown holidays here in Ontario. <laughs> It'll be an interesting Christmas this year, but we're still mm -hmm. going to enjoy it the best we can. Yes. And moreover, uh, it, it is uh, a wonderful break though because there are some very beautiful gifts being bestowed upon some of our party members uh jill yeah so the tiny human has almost been conjured um <laughs> and ready to go so um i'm gonna be taking a little bit of time off to raise my tiny human um but i will be back soon enough before you know it um back in the shadows of dragonheim but uh I will be off for a bit. So enjoy, enjoy your time and uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah. To let all of you know, uh, Jill is going to take a, a couple weeks extra off after the holiday break, uh, during which we are going to be playing more untold tales of Drakenheim with some very special guests to be announced. Uh, so we will Ooh. be continuing to, uh, the, the show will pick up again after the new year. Uh, I believe we're going to be back January 12th. I think the twelfth or the fifth. I think it's the twelfth. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm okay with either, but whatever. Yeah, we'll, we'll get. We'll don't, let. Don't quote me on know. that. We'll, we'll, we, we got to see what our uh, actually. We got to see what the guests say still. Uh, but we're aiming for January, ba being back by January twelfth, and we'll probably play for a couple weeks through February. Uh, with some guests and then we'll see how jill's doing she has already told us that she can't go very long without D, D, even if there is a tiny human but we so hopefully we'll have her back uh, uh back uh by uh by february march but we'll we'll play it by ear and see mm -hmm. uh once we once we know so so next week is going to be uh the big the big mid-season finale yeah oh, we'll, we'll call it the, the yeah. mid-season finale and uh during untold tales i hope to try out some of the tasha's cauldron of everything stuff so mm. be excited about that and uh hopefully hopefully you can see me yes. play some uh cool new characters that i'm excited to try yes out. our our rule for uh, for tasha's cauldron of everything is that you must play a tasha's cauldron subclass so, for, for untold yeah, tales, yeah, yeah. For, for for untold tales, uh, that that it's going to be the the rules for all the characters that we play for that, so we get the chance to see them under the spotlight, see how they play, and maybe even Kelly's going to run a game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm 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 not nervous. You're nervous. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Yeah. So with all that news out of the way, we've we've already gone past our time, but a wonderful thank you for all of us for, to all of you for watching you, things along, and uh, with with that. Uh, we will see you next time in the shadows of Drakenheim.